Hello viewers, thank you very much for watching Gift TV. Please take note of the following. We have five separate videos, lecture videos on theoretical framework discussion. We have one for uh, the part one, that is how to develop theoretical framework. We have how, how to structure the framework. We have the relationship between the theoretical framework and conceptual framework. We have uh, theoretical framework and the study variables. And we also have the theoretical framework and that of the literature review. So please kindly watch all those videos in order to get the full knowledge on the theoretical framework and its relationship with the other part of the research process. Now, today we'll be looking at how to develop theoretical framework. A theoretical framework is the foundational review of existing theories that serve as a roadmap for developing the argument you will use in your research study. The framework is a blueprint for the entire research process. It's a blueprint, it serves as the foundation, okay, that guides the entire building of the study. It serves as a guide on which to build and support your study and also provide a structure to define how you will philosophically, epistemologically, methodologically, and analytically approach the dissertation as a whole. So in your, this theoretical framework, you have to explain to readers the existing theory that support your research by showing that your, your study or your dissertation topic or the thesis is relevant and also grounded in established ideas or theories. Your theoretical framework must justify and conceptualize your research. And it is a crucial first step for your entire research process, being it a research project, a thesis, or dissertation. It is also important to know that a well-rounded theoretical framework sets you up for success in all your research process. Also know that the same research topic can be researched differently by using different research uh, theoretical frameworks. Okay, so every is every theoretical framework will give you a different perspective on the approach, the design, and the literature that you are going to review. So remember that the theoretical framework is very important. The theory that drives your study is very, very important. So before you start your own research, it is crucial to familiarize yourself with the theories and models that other researchers have already developed. Because there is, there is a likelihood that you may have different, different theories Okay, that are available in your field of study. For instance, if, if, if you are studying public policy, there are numerous theories. You have the LA theory, okay, we have the public choice theory, we have the advocacy coalition theories, you have the Kendi multiple stream theory. We have a series of those theories. In economics, you can in you know, undergrowth, we have the soil growth model, we have the endogenous growth models, we have a lot of those growth models that you can um, rely on to do your study. So you have to familiarize yourself with the theory and look at and read around all the theories to, to, to know and identify the one that will best help you to explain your problem. Because there is a good chance or possibility that many different theories about your topic already exist, especially if the topic is broad. In your theoretical framework, you will evaluate, compare, and select the most relevant one or the most appropriate theory that best fit into the study. Your theoretical framework is your opportunity to present and explain what you have learned so that you can situate the idea within your future research topic. Why the framework matter? It matters because by framing your research within a clearly defined field, you make the reader aware of all the assumptions that inform your approach and also show you the rationale behind your choices for the latter session, like the meta session, the discussion, and the conclusion. For this particular session is very important, the theoretical framework. For this part of your dissertation, it lays the foundation because it's a blueprint that will support your analysis, your data collection, the variables, selection, and helping you to even interpret your results and make broader generalizations. Because it is, it is the theory that drives the entire study and you have to make connection after the analysis whether their results refute the theory or is consistent with the theory. So it's very important to know that. Remember that the, the utilization of a theoretical framework can be used in all the 
research designs, being it qualitative, quantitative, and missed method, even sometimes in an action research, you can utilize a framework to drive it. Because every academic study, there must be a theory that drives the entire study. Take note of that. There are three steps to follow to develop a good theoretical framework. Three steps. To create your own theoretical framework for your current study, you can follow these steps. One, identifying key concepts. Two, evaluating and explaining relevant theories. Three, showing how the research fits into existing research. Let's take them one after the other. First, identify key concepts. So you should be able to look into the problem and that of the question to know the key concept that stands out. So the first step of the process is to pick out the key terms or the concept from your statement of the problem and your research questions. You remember that concepts in general often have multiple definitions and they differ you know, uh, depending on the person looking at it. So your theoretical framework should also clearly define what you mean by each term or concept associated with the framework. Let's look at a typical problem and a, qu a question that is associated with a problem. That is an example of a problem. Assuming that company S is pugnacious or struggling with problem that several of their online customers do not return to make successive purchases, all right? Note that this particular problem is a big issue for otherwise fast-growing stores. As a result, the management of the company wants to increase customer loyalty. The key is customer loyalty. And they believe that by improving customer service, underline that one too, will play a major role in achieving their goals of increasing returned customers. They want to increase returned customers because of the loyalty. And how do they want to increase the loyalty through customer satisfaction. So these are the, the two major concepts that runs through this particular problem. Let's look at a typical research question associated with the problem. It reads, how can the satisfaction, underlying satisfaction of a company as online customers be improved in order to increase the quantity of the return customer, underlying return customers? So you see that in the research question too, we have the concept of the loyalty, maintaining uh, the customers and that of increasing the level of satisfaction. So these two concepts also stands out. So the concept of customer loyalty, customer satisfaction are clearly central to this study, along with their relationship to the likelihood that a customer will return. Therefore, your theoretical framework should define this concept that is the customer loyalty and customer satisfaction and, and, and discuss the theories about the relationship between the, the customer loyalty and the customer satisfaction. The second step is evaluate and explain relevant theories. By conducting a thorough literature review, you can determine how other researchers have defined these concepts and draw connection between them. That is the connection between that of the customer satisfaction and that of what, the loyalty. As you write your theoretical framework, your aim is to compare and critically evaluate the approaches that different authors have taken so that you know the one that best explains the situation. So after discussing the different models and theories, you can establish the definitions that best fits your research and justify why. Also, you can equally combine theories from different fields to build your own unique framework if this better suits your topic. But sometimes you see that your problem may be unique and it's hard to find a single framework. It means you can combine different framework and see how they are connected and also what assisting the, the researcher to explain the situation. Because it's all about clarity. Make sure to at least briefly mention each of the most important theories related to your key concept. And if there is a well-established theory that you don't want to apply to your own research, explain why it is not suitable for your purpose. The next one is show how the research fits into existing research. Apart from summarizing and discussing existing theories, 
Your Twitter card framework should also show your project will make use of these ideas and take them a step further. You might aim to do one or more of the following. One, to test whether a theory holds in a specific or previously unexamined context. Two, use an existing theory as a basis for interpreting your results or critique or challenge a theory. Or lastly, to combine different theories in a new or unique way. Let's look at a typical example of a uh, card framework, how we can able to uh, brainstorm to, and also scan the literature to help us identify some of the theory that best explain our situation and so some of the definitions of the concept that we can adapt for this particular problem. Talk of uh, Thomasin's customer satisfaction to educate framework. Thomasin defines customer satisfaction as the perception, the key is perception of the customer as a result of consciously or unconsciously comparing their experiences with their, with their expectations. Kotler and Kelly builds on this definition, that of the Thomasin definition, by stating that customer satisfaction is, is determined by the degree to which someone is happy or disappointed with observed performance of a product in relation to his or her expectations. They further argue that performance that is below expectation leads to a, dis a dissatisfied customer, while performance that satisfies expectation produces satisfied customer. Still on the customer satisfaction definition. There's also a definition by the Zetam and Bitna which is a, a little bit or slightly different from that of the Thomasin, but they argue that satisfaction is the customer self-fulfillment response. It is a judgment that a product or service feature or the product of service itself provides a pressurable level of cons consumption related fulfillment. So that amount and that of the business emphasis is that on obtaining a certain satisfaction in relation to purchasing. But if you look at all these, Thomasin definition is the most relevant to the aims of this particular study. Why? Because given the emphasis it places on conscious and unconscious perception, you know, is key. Although the Zatman and Beta, you know, uh, like uh, Thomasins, say that customer satisfaction is a reaction to the experience gain, there is no distinction between conscious and unconscious comprising in Zetima and Bettner definition. But meanwhile, the companies claim in its mission statement that it wants to sell out not only a product, but also a feeling. Because look at the satisfaction and that of our loyalty. As a result, unconscious comprising will play an important role in the satisfaction of its customers. Therefore, Thomas's definition is the most appropriate and relevant to the study of company X situation. Let's look at uh, Thomasin's idea. The, 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 the Thomasin theoretical framework of customer satisfaction is seen in this figure one, that is customer satisfaction creation. And according to Thomasin, both the so-called value proposition, the so-called value proposition and other influences, that is uh, the wealth map, uh, personal needs, the wealth map, personal needs, past experience, and marketing public relations determine customer needs and expectations. They all influence final customer satisfaction. And that is where uh, all these factors influence the customer satisfaction. These factors are compared to the experiences with the interplay between the expectation and experience determine the customer satisfaction level. Everything, all the factors, okay? The interaction between all the factors, the expectation and experiences determine the level of what? Customer satisfaction. That is key. The dependent variable, it depends on all these elements, experiences and that of what? Expectations. Thomas's model is important for this study as it allows the researcher to determine both the extent to which the company's customer are satisfied as well as where improvement can be made. So for you to consider any theoretical framework, you should consider the Thomasin for a situation where you are dealing with customer satisfaction and loyalty. 
Of course, you could analyze the concept more thoroughly and compare additional definitions to each other. But you could also discuss the theories and ideas of key authors in greater details and provide several mo models to illustrate different concepts. Note that it is important for students and scholars to note that as you write your theoretical framework, try as much as possible to keep an eye out for potential hypotheses for your own research because the theory must drive the hypothesis. Thank you very much for subscribing to GIF TV. I will see you all in the next video.